everyone, my name is Lillian and welcome to my channel. So I've received the following question a lot. Why is it that you chose to pursue a PhD over choosing a more conventional biology route like medical school, for example? I think that's a really great question because I actually originally wanted to go to dental school and it was something I was very adamant about. And so I think this question is really important for everyone to think about. Whether you know for a fact that you want to go to medical school, you know for a fact you want to be a scientist, you know for a fact you want to do something else, or you don't know what you're doing at all. I think it's really important to think about different routes and how things are better suited for you. So with regards to me, I didn't come into college with a biology major. I just kind of started taking chemistry and discovered that I really liked it. And I was thinking, you know, if I follow through with this and let's say major in biology, what are some career paths that I could take? And obviously the first thing people really think about is medical school. In fact, I actually remember when I was a kid, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon and I was kind of turned off from that once I realized that I would have to work 80 hour weeks and basically just work and sleep all the time. So compatibility wise, that was not a career for me, but I didn't know yet if I wanted to go into like med school and just do a different specialty or do something else. And I remember very vividly the first semester of college, I was procrastinating from studying for my calculus and chemistry finals. So I was just looking up, you know, biology jobs and I realized, wow, dentistry is biology. And so I was actually really excited because I tend to think I have a more artistic side to me and I value working with my hands, but I also really love biology. I also really love the idea that I could work with different populations, especially in my community, and I was thinking about potentially studying dentistry, but with a specialty in some sort of diabetes because I wanted to work with communities that were afflicted by a lot of diabetes and help get them the care they needed even if they couldn't necessarily afford it. So for a long time, I was very, I'm going to be a dentist. I made a website all about how I was going to be a dentist. I told all of my faculty members, yeah, like this is my goal. And to this day, I actually think dentistry would have been a good career path for me. I don't think I would have been dissatisfied in any way with doing it. And I do think I would have been able to hopefully change lives. So from first semester of college on, I, you know, set my mind on becoming a dentist, which to people who I guess are more pre-med, it's basically the same requirements as pre-med. So I'm going to be talking about it in that vein. I wanted to go into a medical profession and I actually never got a chance to shadow or anything before I changed my mind because already I was noticing that I wasn't happy in my classes. I was taking my biology classes and I enjoyed the material but then I noticed that as I kept taking more biology classes, there was something weird going on. So first of all, I noticed that even though I enjoyed the material, I was getting really stressed out about it and really stressed out about learning everything and being able to get an A in the class because any pre-health profession really emphasizes grades which is anxiety inducing. This idea that if I get a B in a class that significantly ta tanks my ability to get into a med school or dental school, that was really scary for me. And then I noticed that when I got so stressed out, it was actually hard for me to enjoy the subject that I was learning and that I started to dedicate my life to. I also noticed that you know, there was a part of me that wanted to delve deeper into the material and not in a denigrating way, but I noticed that a lot of my peers didn't tend to have the same perspective that I did on those biology classes. I, for example, didn't so much care about, you know, what the right answer was but why it was the right answer. And I would fall into these rabbit holes of like Wikipedia pages and YouTube videos about like this intricate phenomenon. And I would try and share that with other people who in my class were pre-med or pre-health. And I just noticed they didn't really care as much, which 
makes sense because efficiency wise if you have so much to memorize like all the time and so much to learn it doesn't really necessarily make sense to delve into these rabbit holes because our brains can only hold so much information but i didn't know why that difference persisted and then what happened was i was planning my summer between sophomore and junior year and i had a choice so I was lucky enough and I got into SMDEP for dentistry over at UCLA and I also got into a research program from the American Physiological Society. And I had never done research before. I found that it was very difficult to get research opportunities at my institution because most of the research opportunities are actually for students who are already doing their thesis work and I was just a sophomore. Um, but at the same time, it's not very common for you to get shadowing opportunities and opportunities that let you really delve into the medical, dental, or health fields. So I was struck with what to do. And in the end, I made my decision to do the research experience for a couple reasons. I figured I'll learn that I don't like it, but I'll learn about something new and that's a great opportunity. But also, the research paid more money than the uh, medical experience and that was something that was really important to me back then just to be able to help my family out. So I went with the research experience. And you know, I had the research experience. I'm not really going to talk about it because I just felt like, you know, it was research and I enjoyed doing it, but that's not why I ended up switching to some sort of PhD. So, this is what actually changed. When I came back from my research experience and I started my classes, I was taking really difficult classes. I took organic chemistry, I took physics, and I took cell biology, which are all upper division classes, also very different, you know, the, the trio of science essentially. Um, there were, was not too much overlap. And I had labs involved in addition to everything. So it was just a time suck and it was very difficult. But I noticed that the way I approached these classes was very different ever since I had started doing research. Instead of worrying so much about getting an A, my mind changed and I started thinking, I need to know this because what if in the future, you know, there's a question to answer and knowing this material would be beneficial for that. I started noticing that I was learning the language of science more rather than just memorizing things so I could do well on the MCAT or the DAT and then eventually get into medical school or dental school. All of a sudden, these classes were not just a means to an end. And that was very strange to think about. It was very empowering. And it's amazing how when I started thinking about the science itself and how much I loved the science itself, it was so much easier. That's not to say these classes were easy. They were very difficult. But all of a sudden, it's like a whole load of stress came off of me. I still wanted to do well, but I wanted to do well for different reasons. And I think that set me up for a successful year. Then, going back to the other point, which was my peers, I think that my mind inherently is not meant for a subject that requires tons and tons of memorization. Ironic, I know, because I was a biology major. But when I really thought about it, a profession that required me to go to a, some sort of medical school or dental school requires me to memorize a lot of information and even if you want to know the intricacies of this certain thing, you can do that, but time-wise, that's actually not the best way to approach it. I know that that's the case because I remember seeing students studying in medical school and I would be there next to them and ask them why this certain thing happens. And they would say like, that's a very interesting question, but I actually don't have time to go into that now. And that's not to say these students aren't smart or just as curious at all, but in terms of the sheer amount of information you need to know, it's not efficient to, you know, get the nitty gritty of everything that you're studying. It's just not possible. And I realized that 
For me, I liked science the best when I was getting into that nitty gritty. And I realized I wouldn't feel as fulfilled if, you know, I obtained a lot of information and made these connections with my patients, but I didn't make those connections scientifically. I also really like playing around with different conditions and you can't experiment on your patients. The closest you can get to that is doing something like clinical trials, but I don't think I'm much of a pharma person at all. And so I was at a crossroads because I was so set on dentistry for so long. And while I didn't know for sure that I wanted to do a PhD, I thought, you know, maybe this is an avenue I'd like to explore even more. So what I did the next summer was do another research experience. And for me, this research experience was the defining moment. There were, thing, there were two things I wanted to think about. Was I going to pursue the dental path where I could make far more of a difference in the community in terms of interacting with patients, interacting with communities and making health more accessible? Or was I going to go down this PhD route where I guess I would be working more on treatments and you know, not just providing patients with care, but actually being the person to make the scientific discoveries that advance patient care. And then the second thing was if I wanted to go down the PhD route, was I going to take a gap year? Because I didn't have much research experience. Long story short, after doing the research, I realized that I love research. It is what gives me life. Being able to present my findings to other people made me so happy. Being able to talk with the community and really think about new ideas, new approaches, and really push the bar of what was known was what I wanted to do. That being said, I did not want to remove myself from the medical world completely. So what I decided to do was apply to a variety of programs, some of which had programs that would let you you know, retain and learn about the medical world. Um, for example, Stanford University has a master's of medicine that allows you to take your first year, all is medical school classes. And Harvard University has the leader program, which allows you to take um, biomedical classes. And the purpose of that is to get you familiar with medical culture. And so you can create collaborations with physicians. And I was still nervous um, it, about whether I was making the right decision, but I noticed that in the end it was how I felt in my classes and in my lab, how I was just so much happier with the information that I was learning when I wasn't a stressed out ball of trying to force myself to feed myself information, doing the nitty gritty. And that is what a PhD does. You focus on one subject very, very minutely. And initially I had a lot of hesitation about specializing especially because I, I consider myself of more of a budding polymath and that I want to get to know lots of different fields. But I realized that when I was able to focus on a nitty gritty, I actually was able to learn about everything else so much better. And then I took the plunge, applied to those programs, and here I am now. Um, after being in the leader program where we take classes that are a little bit more like medical classes, but they're not exactly, I absolutely think that I made the right decision. I don't think I would have been happy in medical school or in dental school, especially during the portion where you just have to memorize tons and tons and tons of information, whether or not it's relevant to you. Whereas with a PhD, you're exposed to a lot of information, whether or not it's relevant to you, but you're not necessarily expected to know every minutia, every detail. You really just need to think about your research in complex ways and that breadth of exposure. The purpose of that is if you suddenly find yourself with a problem that needs another way of thinking that is in a different area of biology or in a different area of science, then you can tackle that problem. It's also important for tool development and making sure that the results you're getting is not like an artifact of something else. I found that I was very shocked by 
how much happier I was when I became a PhD student. And while I, again, I do think I would have inevitably loved the dental profession, I don't think I would have been as happy as a dentist or as happy in a health field. And that's nothing wrong with the health field, but more who I am as a person and what makes me happier. For me, the scientific knowledge is what makes me happier and I can find my own ways to interact with patients and interact with students that isn't necessarily being their physician, but being someone who listens to them, someone who listens to their concerns and looks at their situation with a critical lens of, okay, what is biology not addressing that these patients have? And to me, I think that is what makes all the difference. It's just so amazing to me how no matter what, you know, you can end up doing something that necessarily doesn't suit you and be fine. But then when you find something that really fits you as a person better, that feeling is indescribable. And I'm just so grateful that I got the exposure and it really was at that very critical junction where I would have gotten like a shadowing experience versus the research experience that essentially made my decision. I'm grateful that things turned out the way they did. So I'd love to hear all of your thoughts as well, especially if you're thinking about medical school or if I know many of you are on a PhD route. And what was it that made you want to go down a PhD? And do you think that classes had anything to do with it? Do you think it was research experience that really showed you? And if you are not going down a PhD route and maybe tr were trying to do research or are still doing research, what is it that, you know, made you want to go this other direction. So once again, friends, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.